Hello, Joe here from Infinity of Tacoma. I have something special for you today. This 2015 Tesla P85D. D stands for dual electric motors. This is actually a little piece of Tesla history. Uh, Tesla has come a long way in their short life. Uh, in 2021, they have really kind of established themselves as the EV king and really a disruptor and uh, not just EV cars, but cars in general. Um, but back in 2015, when the P85D came out, um, it really put uh, Tesla on the map as a real performance brand. Um, if you can see right here, I ask you if you're thinking about buying this car, check out some of these great archived uh, articles. There's a car and driver one and there's a motor trend one. Um, this uh, same vehicle here uh, with insane mode. If you look at here, um, original uh, price has tested. I think this has about similar equipment as the one they tested, $120,000. So this is about $120,000 when it was new. So what's special about the P85D is this is the first Tesla with actually put dual motors. So the original P85 uh, Model S just had a 470 horsepower electric motor in the rear. But with the P85D, they added a, an, another electric motor in the front for uh, that's 221 horsepower. So that gives you a combined output of 691 horsepower and 687 pound-feet of torque, which you get pretty much instantly uh, because it's an electric uh, car. It doesn't have to rev or get to its power band or change gears. Uh, 0 to 60, 3.1 seconds, quarter mile 11.6, 115 miles an hour, 0.91 Gs on the skid pad, all uh, without burning any fossil fuels. Oh, amazing uh, performance numbers. Obviously today, uh, it might be a little bit overshadowed by the Plaid. Uh, the Plaid I hear is very fast. I actually have a friend who uh, bought one for a dealership and sold it. I wish I had a chance to drive it, but uh, he said it was so fast it actually is kind of uncomfortable. So maybe if you don't really need that level of performance, maybe this uh, close to 700 horsepower P85D uh, might be another compromise and uh, you're not gonna pay 120, 130,000 uh, for a new one. Uh, this one is priced well under 100,000 in the pre-owned market. Uh, we have the original build sheet on this one. It's the clean Carfax vehicle, uh, beautiful shape inside and out. Uh, so specs on this one, this says autopilot with convenience features. Uh, so you have like a, a, a auto steer in the highway, things like that, adaptive cruise control. But I, mind you, this will never be able to be a full self-driving vehicle. You'll never be able to run full self-driving software. If you're interested in uh, having a full self-driving capable Tesla, look at a newer Model S X or uh, Model 3 or Model Y, which we actually have those in stock too. We actually have 12 Teslas in stock right now the time of making this video so if you're interested in Tesla's uh, we have a lot of Tesla's and we have a lot of Tesla knowledge uh, you know aside from Tesla itself but uh, um, you know they don't have many used Tesla's so we have a pretty decent used Tesla selection in the South Sound going back to this vehicle 85 kilowatt battery performance uh, this has the premium upgrades package uh, deep blue metallic paint all glass panamaric sunroof very nice uh, beautiful 21-inch 21 21 gray turbine wheels. And here's a kicker, free unlimited supercharging. Um, we've had a lot of Teslas. I think we've probably had 35 Teslas on our corporate account that we've bought and sold over the years at our store. I've only seen a handful that's had the free unlimited supercharging. So exactly what you say, you own this vehicle, you have free unlimited supercharging for life, which is big. Supercharging isn't too expensive, but Every supercharge session, usually, you know, it charges you between $12 and $18. Uh, so that's like a free tank of gas. And uh, supercharging isn't the greatest for the battery, so Tesla does encourage you to charge at home as much as possible. But if you're on a road trip or out for the day or you need charging at a pinch, uh, the supercharging network is amazing. It was a lot smaller back in 2015. And now, uh, I think they have 30,000 superchargers all over the world. There's a ton here in Washington right now where I am in Fife. Uh, there's a supercharging location 10 minutes away in Fredge away from me. And there's also one at the Auburn Mall and they always have uh, chargers available. All right. And then as far as the uh, coverage goes, so the uh, bumper to bumper coverage has expired, but people do have concerns over the battery and the drive units. That coverage is still good till uh, uh, May 21st, 2023. So that's nice to know. With the beautiful uh, premium upgrades package, this has a beautiful uh, leather interior, nice Alcantara suede, headliner, dashboard, 
Um, one of the greatest aspects is this uh, big screen right here on the Tesla. Uh, all the functionality of the vehicle is handled right here. Um, with premium connectivity, um, you have lots of great features. It has a, basically a built-in Wi-Fi hotspot, so you can get uh, Google Maps, um, which is nice. You can also use it to find uh, charging. So there's destination charging like at hotels, that's more of the slow charging. So you go to a hotel, you plug in and charge it for the night. Uh, then there's um, 50 kilowatt charging, which is a little bit faster, but if you want to find the supercharging, you can go into that one and that shows you all the available superchargers in the area. <coughs> Excuse me, just getting over cold. And it's actually good to always use the GPS navigation to, uh, to find the supercharger, even if you know where it is, because when you do uh, find the supercharger, um, even though where you know it is, if you do put it in the navigation system, it will actually precondition the battery uh, for, for supercharging. So it actually prepares uh, the battery for supercharging. I think it might it has to get it to a, a specific temperature uh, and that makes the supercharging more efficient and it should charge faster. So that's a little uh, Tesla tip right there for you for supercharging. Even if you know where it is, always use a G the GPS to navigate to that supercharger just so it preconditions the battery. You can use this to open the, the sunroof. Uh, this has an adjustable uh, air suspension, which is very nice. Uh, lighting, uh, driving, the autopilot with convenient features. You have the uh, auto steer, which is great. So basically uh, keeps you uh, steered in your lane. It will follow gentle bends in the road. You do have to pay attention. You do have to keep your hands in the wheel. This isn't a full self-driving vehicle. Always pay attention, but it does do a great job of battling driver fatigue. Uh, this one also has a smart summon. It does work okay. I think it's kind of more of a parlor trick, but it is kind of cool. And also be careful of that, you know, so you don't cause any problems. Um, but really cool stuff. Um, and the nice thing about the S uh, versus the three and the Y, which I like a lot, um, the S is more of a luxury vehicle. It has more of a premium feel. So you kind of feel like you're more like an S class or E class Mercedes or something like that. Or the uh, the three and the Y is a little bit more sparse. And the S also has a uh, additional uh, gauge cluster right here, which is nice. Some people just don't like that single screen. So you have the gauge cluster navigation, uh, battery information. Uh, you have the toy box. So you can do all that silly stuff like the fart mode. Um, then uh, for entertainment, you can play video games, which is cool. Um, even the driving video game is nice because you can use the steering wheel and the brake and pedal to drive the uh, car in the video game. And then we're at the supercharger charging. You can watch Netflix, Disney Plus, Hulu, YouTube. See, so you can see right now I, it's preconditioned the battery for a supercharging. I might run into the supercharger just to top it off. Uh, power adjustable steering wheel at tilt and telescopes. All right, I'll try not to go too long. I always have a problem going too long in my Tesla videos because uh, there's these thing, these cars are so new, so different than every other car. Obviously, if I was doing a video like in a Toyota Corolla or something like that, they're good cars, but they're just so simple and basic that you know I can do a video on that in three minutes. So the nice thing too is with all the batteries in the floor, um, and there's no drive shafts, no transmissions. Uh, it offers a lot of interior space. The floor being flat, it makes it nice and spacious in the front seats and the back seats. Very, very comfortable. Absolutely beautiful vehicle, 20 inch turbine wheels. And surprisingly, uh, the same basic design, you know, they did uh, facelift it a little bit on the front, but the same basic design on the brand new 2022 Model S. Oh, this also has a nice car cover too. There's the charging cables. Uh, the 2022 Model S uh, body on the outside is very similar. It's almost uh, very, very similar to the body on this one. They didn't change it much. And really, you know, don't fix what it, what's not broken. I mean, it's a beautiful design. It's a beautiful looking body. And on top of that, this is actually one of the lowest drag coefficients of any vehicle on the road. So uh, if, if it's already one of the most streamlined, lowest drag coefficients uh, vehicles on the road, why uh, mess with changing the, the styling and potentially the aerodynamics if you've already uh, have achieved that amazing goal. So, uh, like if you look at the newer uh, Teslas, the front end styling is a little bit different, but the design on the lights, the size, the rear is very, very similar. Nice thing too is uh, without having an engine in the front, you have a frunk, 
additional storage and it also makes it very safe. Uh, not only do you have a very low, low roll, rollover risk because of the weight of the battery is being so low, it makes it pretty much impossible to roll this vehicle over. Uh, and if it does get close to rolling over or get it's on its roof, the weight of the battery will just pop it right back on its wheels. But you also have a crumple zone that's about 60% larger uh, than a gas car because we have an engine here that kind of limits your crumple zone and, actually, and then you have to worry about the engine actually getting pushed into the uh, passenger compartment and certain frontal collisions. But with no engine, there's no worry of that. And then you have a huge crumple zone to absorb all that cross energy, making this one of the safest vehicles on the road. Don't take my word for it. Do some research, some simple Google search. You can find Tesla, including the Model S, is one of the lowest probability of injury in an automobile accident out of any car on the road. So it's one of the fastest cars in the road. In fact, when the P85D uh, came out and they tested it, I think for, for a while, I think until the Porsche Taycan Turbo, this is pretty much uh, one of the fastest uh, production sedans you can buy obviously they've you know they had the p90d then the p100 then you know this has insane plus mode then they came out with ludicrous mode but uh for most people i think this with insane plus mode is plenty plenty fast um there's a few other cars on the road that you'll encounter that could probably keep up with you in this beautiful machine that being said how about we take it for a spin max power select max battery power to condition your battery to a high temperature where it has low independence. Best for short term acceleration and performance. The trade off for the power boost is extra energy consumption and earlier power fade on long aggressive drives. Alright, now it is in insane plus mode. And it also has a launch mode as well. Holy cow. And uh, I guess one of the first things that you'll notice when you get behind any Tesla, behind the wheel of any Tesla, is how quiet it is. All right. So the nice thing about auto steer is uh, for a lot of uh, these uh, level two driver's assistance uh, programs, they don't let you really use them on roads like this. We're kind of like on this uh, four lane road with a center divider, but the uh, auto steer does work. Uh, the thing with no sound of the engine, no gear changes, these things are almost deceptively fast. Just, uh, it's just, uh, it's just insane. Just in the name of insane mode, how fast they go. You just step on the gas, and it's instant thrust. Unbelievable. And uh, the other thing I know about the, I noticed about the Model S, even though it's kind of a larger car, it is very light in its feet. It's very easy to drive. Visibility is really good. So uh, let's talk about the uh, autopilot with convenience features. Um, it was really kind of revolutionary um, back in the day when it came out. Now it's uh, standard on every uh, new Tesla that you buy. And the thing is, a lot of people make a big thing about full self-driving, full self-driving. Uh, full self-driving is really still in beta and uh, they're not at the point where vehicles can really full self-drive. The people that are using the beta software, they're still instructed to you know, keep their he hands on the wheel at all time. Uh, the vehicle might do something unexpected, you have to be ready to intervene. Uh, they're still testing uh, this stuff. But um, I think what most people would just be more than happy to have is the uh, auto steer, which this has. You can hear it just shut off and put the blinker on. Uh, but when you have auto steer on, um, when you have auto steer enabled, it keeps you in your lane. It will follow uh, bends in the highway, uh, bends in the road and stuff like that. Um, and then it will move the flow of traffic. It won't stop for red lights. Obviously, if there's a car in front of you, uh, it will stop for that. So you have to pay attention. If you are uh, using uh, the auto steer, not on the highway, you have to be extra vigilant because the system is really designed for highway use. It's not for roads like this, even though you can get it to work on roads like this. Um, a road like this being a four lane road with a center divider, with traffic light signals, crosswalks, things like that. Uh, you really have to pay attention because this vehicle is not gonna automatically stop for everything. 
but when it's used properly um, it's a very very safe system um, and it really does a great job at battling driver fatigue whenever I get on the highway and I'm driving I get really stressed out uh, but when I'm in a Tesla and I have the autopilot of auto steer enabled even though I'm still paying attention ready to intervene I can feel a whole level of stress uh, just pulled away from me I, I can calm down a little bit I can kind of breathe a little bit nicer um, I can relax a little bit it really makes a big difference uh, and if you do drive and stop and go traffic you drive a lot I can tell you the autopilot will be a godsend so up here we have a rotary coming on and the auto steer will not be able to handle this rotary so uh, to set the auto steer off and the autopilot off you just put your foot in the brake and that will disable that uh, to overcome the auto steer you can also take control of the wheelie just give it a little tug and that will uh, pop it out of auto steer mode too the controls uh, for the autopilot are a little bit different in the Model S and X, or at least the older ones, um, versus the, uh, the Y and the 3. The Model S and X with the new redesigned interior, I believe it has similar controls. All right. And you can see here, there's a red light right here. It was kind of slowing down because it saw some cars, but as soon as those cars moved out of the way, it started speeding up. So it just shows to show you have to be vigilant when you're using the auto pilot uh, if you're not paying attention it wouldn't stop for this red light and you could run this intersection and get yourself in trouble and um, you know all these people that do get into trouble of autopilot they do get into accidents they, you know they sue Tesla and, you know they have these investigations but I can guarantee you when these people are getting in these incidents they are not properly using autopilot they're not paying attention because if they were paying attention then they would have intervened and prevented the accident from happening you know if I see an imminent accident, I'm not going to assume that the car is going to see it and do something. I'm going to, if I see it going to happen, I'm going to intervene. I'm not going to wait. But how it does help you is that when you're not paying attention and the car can intervene before you even know what's going on, that's when it can save your life. And that's when it really, you know, makes these much, much safer vehicles. All right. So we got the auto steer on again. I'm going to change lanes because people do like to uh, people do like to uh, go fast on this road. When you have auto steer enabled, it will not let you go more than five mile, miles per hour over the speed limit. You can uh, override it. Like I can hit the throttle right now, and it's still keeping the auto steer enabled, and I can override it. But as soon as I take my foot off the gas it's going to slow it down it's probably good i just slowed down right there i wasn't going too fast but uh, uh, a cop just passed so uh. so this is really nice i'm relaxed the car is driving itself it's uh you know keeping speed it's keeping it in its lane but again i'm paying attention ready to intervene in case the car doesn't see something so I'm watching the car's back and the car's watching my back and that's the way you're supposed to do it with level 2 autonomy. Uh, level 5 autonomy is when you have a car that can drive itself, you can take a nap, you can be drunk, you don't have to have a driver's license, the car is 100% capable of handling everything without a driver. And uh, really we're not there yet with any vehicle. I think Tesla will probably be the first to, to achieve that goal. Uh, they're doing some amazing stuff with their full self-driving. I watched the beta videos. If you're curious, uh, Dirty Tesla is a good YouTube channel. Tesla owners of Silicon Valley, just to name a couple, that uh, are constantly showing you the progress of this full self-driving beta software. And um, I think in another couple of years they could achieve that goal. And when they do achieve that goal of achieving level 5 autonomy, I think it really is going to change the world uh, very fast. So what I'm going to do, um, uh, even though I know where the supercharger is, even though I know where the supercharger is, uh, how do I get it to pop up again? Oh, here we go. So even though I know where the supercharger is, I'm going to still navigate Drive myself the to the supercharger because what it's going to do is now precondition the battery for fast charging. So even though I know where the charger is, because I'm navigating to it, the car knows that I'm about to supercharge it, 
So it's preconditioned the battery for supercharging, so that means it will charge faster and more efficiently. Uh, so basically what it's doing is it's making sure to uh, get the vehicle up to, the battery up to uh, a proper temperature to make it uh, the most efficient for supercharging. I really love the Google Maps. And if you don't like the, the actual picture map, you can actually change the view um, to just the uh, kind of the, uh, illu the uh, illustrated map. Sometimes if the lines aren't perfect, like in these intersections, sometimes the car can get confused. So when you do have the auto steer on, you have to be extra vigilant. Because again, I do remind you, this system is not designed really to be used in these conditions. This system is designed to be used on a, you know, for a highway, a divided highway with no traffic lights and crosswalks and things like that. So when you are using these systems, I, again, I remind you on roads like this, extra vigilant. I can even get the, the auto steer to work on, you know, simple two lane roads. Uh, and again, you have to be careful, especially uh, when you have uh, slow corners. There's a video I can show you of me kind of testing at the limits of uh, the auto steer with, uh, you know, the, the basic autopilot. And uh, if, if you're going 40 miles an hour and you have a hairpin turn coming up, the car is not going to know to slow down. It'll try to take that corner at 40 miles an hour, uh, which could end up being possibly disastrous. So obviously um, it stopped for these cars, uh, for this light because there's cars ahead of me. Um, but I've had the, uh, the autopilot on, I don't know, for about 10 minutes and it, it's doing pretty fine on its own. I haven't had to intervene. So it's nice. It really, really makes driving so much better. I can't tell you until you experience it. It really is a godsend. So if you're someone that really hates driving, especially in congested areas, uh, it really, it really does make it a lot better. Um, enjoyable, relaxing. And the thing I noticed too about this um, autopilot, uh, which, oh, it just popped it out of there. So it doesn't take much effort on the steering wheel to overcome uh, the auto steer, which is good because if the car is trying to do stupid, it's easy for you just to take control and uh, of the vehicle. So it's it's by that it's it's that way by design. Here we are, we're close to the supercharger. battery is preconditioning. The nice thing too, I guess uh, when it comes into pulling out in traffic or going or kind of kind of going over through those lanes making that turn with in oncoming traffic, feet, you will arrive at your destination. Having the power and instant thrust of an electric vehicle is kind of a safety issue. Uh, not an issue, but a, a, I guess a safety feature is so many times where I've kind of tried to get in the traffic and maybe I pulled out in front of people when I shouldn't have and then all of a sudden, you know, the car, the transmission is downshifting or something's going on the car where it's just kind of getting overwhelmed by, all, you know, me th stomping on the throttle. I've had that happen, like, oh, I thought I could pull out and, now you have arrived at your and then the car is just taking a lot longer to, to get moving and I see these cars coming. Uh, but with an electric car like this, you hit the gas and this thing takes right off. So just, you know, popping in the traffic, merging in the traffic, it is very easy just because this car just moves so fast. All right. So here we are finally at the superchargers. Um, sometimes they can get pretty full. This is a new supercharger, but it looks like we have a good amount of people utilizing these chargers here. Uh, hopefully I can find a stall for myself, but it looks like we got one right over here. Kind of a little cool to stop at the Tesla supercharger. I don't know why, it's kind of geeky of me, but I always think it's kind of fun to come here, stop and see the other Teslas. They always have it by stores and it's always by a Starbucks, so I'll get out, get a cup of coffee and uh, yeah. And it doesn't take long. There's really no other electric car you can get that has a charging infrastructure, infrastructure like Tesla. Uh, these superchargers make it so much better. 
Um, you know, I do, we do sell other electric cars. I do utilize some other electric car chargers. I'm not going to name names, but it's not as convenient. You know, when you have the Tesla on your account, you just plug in the charger. There's no hitting any buttons, no putting any information in there. Uh, it just starts charging and it's automatically built to your account. Or when I have to utilize other car chargers, I have to get on the app, then I have to turn on the charger. And I was charging a Nissan uh, Leaf the other day at a charger I'm not going to name, name names of, but I was having a, a difficult time. Uh, and it made me realize how nice it is you know, for the Tesla. And when it comes to road tripping, it makes it a lot harder. You know, I've heard stories of people trying to road trip in EVs, and even though there's other EVs that have range that is similar to to Tesla's, when they go there and it, they can't get it to work, or there's only one charger and someone else is using using it, it can create a lot of problems, and it makes it a lot more complicated uh, to uh, to road trip with an EV. A good example is my dad's also in the car business. Um, they had a customer who bought a, a different brand EV, I'm not going to name names, and she had a, a, a pretty common commute. I think uh, she commuted, I don't know, once a week or a couple times a week from Massachusetts to New York City, and the electric car she had, there wasn't an infrastructure to charge on the way. She couldn't, she couldn't do the trip, so she traded the, <clears throat> the electric car she just bought, excuse me, just getting over cold, she traded the electric car she bought for a Model Y, and of course with the amazing supercharging infrastructure especially in a highly populated area like you know that corridor from you know boston to, to new york city you know charging is not an issue at all so uh let's get this one charged all right i got it plugged into the supercharger so you can see here uh time remaining about 35 minutes so the battery is about 56 percent and you can see the charge rate so batteries are interesting so the way batteries work um, at least the lithium ion batteries in a Tesla is uh, the more empty the battery is the faster the charge rate will be and as the fuller the battery gets the slower the charge rate so you'll notice if you have a really empty battery it will charge really fast so right now it's charging at 39 kilowatts so it's adding about 125 126 miles of range an hour which is pretty good you can also set limits you also have this slider here um, and uh, just for the sake of life of the battery, they don't recommend you fully charging it. Plus it takes a little bit extra time just to get that extra last 10% of charge. <coughs> Excuse me. Can take an extra 20 minutes uh, as well. Uh, so, but just for the healthiness of the battery, they don't recommend you fully, it, fully charging it unless you're going on a road trip. Okay, you're going on a long road trip. You need max battery. That's an exception. You can put that slider so that the battery will charge all the way. And then you just hit done right there. And so now you can see just by uh, going from all the way from there, it went from 35 minutes to 50 minutes. So you can see, you know, how that can change that. And then if we go right back to here on trip, then it's uh, 30 minutes. So you can see how much time it adds just to add that extra last 10% to the battery. Um, and then, you know, while you're sitting at the charger, uh, you can uh, play games, uh, or you could watch YouTube. You can also uh, listen to music. With the premium connectivity, you can stream music. Tesla has a great uh, channel of stations. I, I like to listen to, obviously, you can listen to regular radio. Um, it looks like you can also uh, set up Spotify and stuff like that. Um, if you love music, they have amazing sound systems as well in Teslas. They're quiet, which makes it great for listening to music in general in a car, but they really don't, uh, they don't, they don't cut any corners when it comes to uh, the stereo systems in these things. They absolutely kick and I love it. I'm a musician, so I'm pretty picky about my music quality and sound quality. And it's one of the best in the business in my opinion. All right, so uh, charging very nicely, 64%. Looks like I got about 25 minutes left. I went right across the street to get Starbucks. Like I said, there's always a Starbucks seemingly close by most superchargers. Chewing a cup of coffee and take some time to also talk to you about the uh, mobile app. And this is a, another really cool feature uh, with Teslas. Um, so if you're away from your Tesla, you can uh, check the state of charging. You can see you still have some time uh, for it to charge, so you don't have to worry about it, uh, you know, charging and taking up a uh, bay, a charging bay. Tesla actually will charge you an idle fee if you uh, don't get your car fast enough. I think it's like a dollar a minute or something like that. So obviously, um, 
you know, you don't want to leave your car on the charger for too long. Uh, I do find that the first time it happens, they give you a pass, so which is nice. Um, so, but it's you know no excuse. It's really easy to monitor. You can stop the charging. Um, you can also use the mobile app to uh, control the vehicle. I can open the roof, open the trunk, unlock it, open the, the open the charging port. I can flash lights, honk the har uh, horn, start it, vent the windows. I can uh, s turn the climate control on. I can see the location of the vehicle. Um, and this is, you know, you could be anywhere in the world, just as long as you have uh, internet connection, you know, for the car and your phone, you can do all this stuff. Obviously, this is a smart summon. For maintenance, you schedule, uh, 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 oh, that's something different. But as far as maintenance goes, uh, service, you do schedule all your service uh, through the app, roadside assistance. It also tells you your current mileage and VIN number, uh, too, through the mobile app. Really cool stuff. Okay, we're getting pretty close to being done. About five minutes less at 86%. You can see uh, the rate of change has slowed down as the battery is full. Before, I think it was like 150, 160 miles an hour, over 40 kilowatts. Uh, but as the battery gets full, as I said before, the rate of charge slows down. Okay, so I had a nice time. Had a little cup of coffee, listened to some music. Um, I had a chance to fall a little bit more in love with these cars. Uh, it's always tough. Um, as much as I love these cars, it's almost like fostering kids. You care about them, you do love them, but you can't get too attached because they do have to go for their forever home. So we got this thing charged up, so hopefully charged up for whoever its new owner may be, uh, driving at home, hopefully a forever home. And I genuinely really love these cars. Um, I can tell you, I've been in the car business all my life. I'm 41 years old. I've been you know, working at car dealerships since I was 15. I've driven all sorts of cars. I've owned all sorts of cars. I don't yet own a Tesla. I'd love to own this one. Right now, it's not in the cards. Um, luckily, as a used car manager, um, I have uh, you know liberty to buy and sell lots of different cars. Since I like Teslas, I buy and sell uh, lots of Teslas for our store. So at least I get to play with them and get to try different ones and uh, educate you a little bit about it. But yeah, these are awesome cars. I you know they're very special. They're so different than any other car I've ever experienced. Uh, they really make me excited. Um, they really, you know, do, um, you know, pull at the automotive enthusiast part of me. Uh, it's just, I can't go on and on about how amazing cars these are and, you know, how they make me feel. They, I can't even really put it in words how, you know, these cars make me feel. And I guess it might be different for someone who's not an enthusiast like me. Uh, but it just goes to show you, uh, you know, the amazing execution of these products how you know it is a product designed to buy buy and sell and make money but it really feels like it you know has character it feels like it has a soul it really does you know give me a yearning to own one so uh maybe if you happen to be thinking about buying one this one or something like it congratulations i think you'll be very very happy thanks for watching this video hope to see you soon and have a wonderful day